So back in the day of wireless G or Wi-Fi 3, things were pretty bleak. You had a router with a single antenna and a single stream and it would make a connection with the Wi-Fi device and it was all good because back then there weren't that many Wi-Fi devices. So you had a single stream going to a single wireless device. And then if you bought another Wi-Fi device, you'd have a single stream going to two wireless devices. And that usually worked okay. But the problem is that single stream is now being split up between two wireless devices. And as Wi-Fi became more and more popular, people would add devices and the signal strength and the speed would get worse and worse. In addition to that problem, Wi-Fi 3 didn't do a very good job of making its way around obstacles either. So despite all these difficulties, people had had their taste of Wi-Fi and they wanted more. This forced manufacturers to come up with their own proprietary ways of speeding things up and beating out the competition. So that's when you started hearing things like Super G and G+. Unfortunately, most of these were proprietary and only worked if you bought devices from the same manufacturer as the router. So along came 802.11n or Wi-Fi 4. Wi-Fi 4 brought with it a number of advances. One of them was dual bands. By adding a second band, users had the choice between two different frequency bands. The 2.4 gigahertz frequency band is slower than the 5 gigahertz band, but it has more range and can travel through walls better. The 5 gigahertz band is faster, but doesn't have the same range as 2.4. The thing about this was these two bands could be used simultaneously in the same space without interfering with each other. This prevented wireless devices from being slowed down by other wireless devices on your own home network. Unlike Wi-Fi 3, which had only one stream, Wi-Fi 4 had three streams, and each stream was capable of 150 megabits per second, as opposed to wireless G, which was only capable of 54. By adding these streams and bands up, manufacturers could give the impression they were selling you some crazy super fast wireless router. So for example, you would have three streams on one band and three streams on the other band for a total of six streams, which could come out to as much as 900 megabits per second. And that's what they would put on the box. Unfortunately, most devices can only pick up one or two spatial streams, but that didn't prevent manufacturers from using this as a marketing gimmick. On this particular router, we have two streams on the 2.4 gigahertz band, 150 times two equals 300, and then you put three streams on the five gigahertz band, three times 150 is 450, they would add all these together and call it a 750 megabits per second wireless router. Well, you know, that sounds good, but it really only serves the purpose of comparing it to other wireless routers. You're really not gonna get 700 megabits per second on any device because most devices only can support one or two spatial streams at a time. So even though your router says it's a 750 megabits per second router, you're actually only going to get about 150 to 300 megabits per second on a wireless end device. The point still remains, Wi-Fi 4 is still a huge improvement over Wi-Fi 3. All these innovations kept people happy for a few years, but as usual, people can't get enough of a good thing. And soon people were confronted by the limitations of Wi-Fi 4, and Wi-Fi 5 was born. Wi-Fi 5 is when things started getting crazy, mostly due to the enormous amount of bandwidth required by online gaming. Somehow, winning online games became synonymous with having the biggest, baddest wireless router with the most antennas and the most bandwidth. This brought about the phenomenon known as gaming routers. Some gaming routers actually have useful features for gamers, such as Duma OS, that actually enhance the gamer's performance and experience, but at a cost. For everyday users, wireless AC or Wi-Fi 5 still had many advantages. 
For one thing, it's three times as fast as Wi-Fi 4, and the newer Wave 2 devices introduced a new form of MIMO called MUMIMO or MU-MIMO, which I'll explain in a minute. One of the limitations of Wi-Fi 5 was it only worked on the 5 gigahertz band. So what you would get is you would get a dual band wireless router and you could run Wi-Fi 5 on one band and Wi-Fi 4 on the other. So a typical dual band wireless router you'd find on the market would have 5 gigahertz on one band and 2.4 gigahertz on the other. They would have three spatial streams of Wi-Fi 5 on the 5 gigahertz band which comes out to 1300 then they put three spatial streams of Wi-Fi 4 on the 2.4 gigahertz bands which equals 450 megabits per second so they would add those two together and say this is a 1750 megabits per second router now you and I both know that that's BS but for comparison purposes it's still accurate Another thing that some people miss is in order to get these AC speeds, you need to have an AC device. So in order to get the most benefit from this Wi-Fi 5 router, you want to get a Wi-Fi 5 adapter for a laptop or a device that supports Wi-Fi 5. In addition, if you want to connect to more than one spatial stream at a time, that device also has to support MIMO or MU MIMO, which we'll get into in a minute. So on this wireless router, if you have a device that's connected to the 5 gigahertz band with only one spatial stream, you're going to get a maximum of 433 megabits per second. Actually, after you subtract 30% for overhead and other types of interference, not to mention distance, that number is going to be a lot less. With Wi-Fi 6, the trend continues. The Wi-Fi 6 signal is actually only about 40% faster than Wi-Fi 5, but with the ability to support as many as 8 spatial streams and increasing the channel width, you get another exponential jump in performance. I go into details about channels in the ebook. Keep in mind that in order to realize the advantages of Wi-Fi 6, you want to have a Wi-Fi 6 device or get an adapter for your device that supports Wi-Fi 6. I personally would wait until Wi-Fi 6 devices become the norm before going out and buying a Wi-Fi 6 router. But that's just me. I've never been one to rush out and spend all my hard-earned money on the latest and greatest when I know if I'm just a little patient, prices will eventually come down as the technology continues to move forward. I don't want to be the guy standing there scratching my head going, man, I just paid twice that for the same thing a year ago. Then again, I have been fortunate enough to have the latest and greatest technology, and I know how exciting it can be.